Alright, my name is Jamie. We're picking up where we left off in this tutorial series for a 2D, uh, pro, a 2D game in JavaScript. We're following kind of along with Code in Moore's uh, Java version of the uh, 2D tile-based game. Uh, we have a few differences, things that we're going to have to, uh, a few hurdles we'll have to um, get over, uh, some things that are a bit different. So uh, you'll notice things aren't going to be exactly the same way his is, but they should look fairly similar, especially the end results should look identical so let's let's just continue on so we've created the display class and as of right now we're just calling a new display in here um, what we want to do is let's create a actual game class and instead of calling the display in here we'll call the display in the game class and get a few other things set up so we're gonna to go to class and we're going to create a new JavaScript file and it's gonna be called game just like every other one we're going to define we're going to require class and we will require um, display and right now let's require now we'll leave that right there for now um, and then we're going to have a function and pass in class uh, we'll get access to class and display and we will set a few things so one thing that I'm going to set up is a variable called this with an underscore so um, because of the scope issues and things like that I do want some private uh, functions that have access to the specific uh, instance of the game class that was creative and this right here by putting it out here on the root of the uh, of the uh, module um, when we set it we'll have access to this specific variable in all of our functions regardless of its scope so a um, few other things that I want to create uh, we want our title width height and I will say G and display and that will be it for now so these are just some variables that we'll be using and as we go through you'll see what each of those ones are for now we definitely will be adding more as we go um, so I will create a variable called game set it equal to class dot extend and give it an initialize function we're going to pass in title width and height into this as well all right oops there and we will set this that root one to this so we have access to the instance in uh, the, our main scope and we will do some other things just set title equal to title width equal to width and height equal to height there will be a few, uh, maybe a couple other things in here eventually so now we have access to um, a title width and height and what we're going to do is instead of doing display here we're just going to put game in game in our launcher and pass in all the same things but instead of passing it into the game we'll pass it to or into the display we'll pass it into the game and we'll set this variable to game so now the launcher is going to create a new game object instead of a new uh, display um, and what we can do with this now is we will uh, have a few things that happen when we initialize our game so this is just creating the the game class and we'll have a function in it which will run uh, when we initialize it, the uh, the game and one of the things that it will do is set display which we have up here display which we have right up here so we're referring to the one uh, in the outermost scope display is equal to a new display 
with our title width and height passed in. So now we're still going to get that display and we're still going to have reference to um, the, the, the width and height you know through that as well um, the, you know the getters that we created there. Um, so that's all I'm going to have in here. First thing uh, before we do anything else we're going to create the game class reference. Oops, game and app slash classes slash game. All right. So right now we've got these. Um, one thing that I might do just because is throw these in alphabetical order. Not that it matters, but all right. So now we have access to the game uh, whenever we need to pull that module into something, which is most likely at this point just the launcher will ever need access to the game. Um, so we've got this going, creating the display, and uh, one thing that we could do, because a game is going to have to have a tick in a render function, so they're going to have to have something that continues to run over and over and over, um, which is going to update the the canvas and update the variables. Um, not in that order actually. It'll update the variables and then update the canvas. So we can actually just create those functions as well. So I can say function tick and we're going to pass in delta time and you'll see why later. And we'll also have function render. So there's a few things that we're going to have to do before we can um, tick and render. So one thing that we're going to do is actually um, have a start function that is a um, that we can reference from the launcher to actually start up the game. So we'll say game dot prototype dot start is equal to function. And in our start function, we'll actually need to create a variable up here and set it to false. So var running is equal to false. And this is obviously just going to let, let us know if the game is currently running. So uh, we're going to set it to false because obviously the we aren't running so what we're going to check is if running if running we're just going to return which just stops everything else from running else we'll set running equal to true and run the this dot this dot run function now i haven't created that function yet but we can do that now so We'll say game dot prototype dot run is equal to function, and there's going to be some stuff that happens when we run, um, as well as creating our game loop inside of here. So this is going to get a bit complicated, um, but understand that uh, uh, there's some important things that have to be done if we want consistency when the game's running, depending on obviously the uh, performance of the the user's uh, computer and browser. We're going to have to now uh, do a few things in the run function. So the first thing that's going to happen is we will initialize everything that we uh, that we need. So such as the display at this moment will be initialized in the initial function. Um, there'll be more in the future. We're going to set a few variables. FPS is going to be equal to 30, which is our frames per second that we're trying to get. Um, we're also going to have time per tick and that's going to be equal to a thousand divided by FPS okay um, and you'll see how we use this momentarily so we also have Delta which Delta is just going to be the time between uh, uh, ticks and we also have now which we will set um, which we will set inside of our loop our game loop 
and we have last time which we're gonna set to now um, which is date dash now or yeah date dash now and then we are going to have a timer set it equal to zero and ticks equal to zero all right so we have to create the game loop so inside of here we're going to create a loop function and uh, it will only run if running is true so basically if we have hit start and running is true and we haven't turned it off um, we're going to assume we continue running and uh, and continue to run this function so uh, underneath the function we're going to call it so that when you run when you run the function uh, in the game class called run it will just start the loop up um, uh, automatically so we'll have to call this function to get everything started um, and so if we are running we're gonna set a few things so now is actually gonna be set to date dash now which is the time in milliseconds and Delta will be equal to now minus last time so this will get the time since the last tick and then our timer will be incremented by the uh, Delta and our last time will then be updated to now so last time is equal to now so after everything said and done we're going to create uh, set last time equal to um, what the current time was so um, this is just getting everything set up so that we can start timing things uh, and, and getting the loop running consistency consistently and uh, and when we're done uh, it won't matter how slow their computer is things will actually run uh, not necessarily smooth but they will run accurately so no matter what our physics and different things like that that we end up doing will will work correctly um, so now we have to basically tell it to update um, it our our tick in our our render function and actually call those so we'll say if timer is greater than or equal to our time per tick so reason why we have frames per second and the time per tick is just so that we can we're used to being able to say okay 30 frames per second we're, we're used to that time per tick is what the computer is going to use um, to get this in milliseconds so if we wanted to do the math down in here in the time per tick we could but we're just going to do it this way so that the computer knows um, what we're talking about in milliseconds so if the time passed is greater than or equal to um, how long how many uh, milliseconds we want um, each frame to run at then we will actually call the tick and render functions so basically it's just saying you know if if we if this runs faster than uh, you know every frame if the um, loop runs faster than our frames per second we're still not going to be we're not going to actually be running it faster or if our loop runs slower than frames per second um, we're still going to be doing updates as fast as possible so that we can kind of get a uh, a smoother motion and a more predictable motion so DT is going to be equal to um, which is Delta and this uh, Delta time is going to be a multiplier that we can use within our uh, tick function to get consistent speed so what we're actually saying instead of saying you know an object uh, or a player moves at 30 frames or 30 pixels per frame or 10 pixels per frame we actually can say something consistent like he moves at a hundred pixels a second and that's what we're actually going to do is we're going to do it by um, how how fast we want him to run per second so timer is going to return a millisecond um, time if we divide that by a thousand we'll get seconds and this way now when we pass this um, this Delta time into our tick function we'll have access to it and we'll be able to uh, multiply our uh, our speed by that and get a consistent uh, consistent travel or consistent um, uh, time 
to multiply by essentially. So like if we want it every second uh, to move 100 pixels, if it's running faster than that, um, we can actually multiply 100 by whatever we're currently running between ticks um, to get one second. So you'll see how that works in the future. You'll see that no matter what our frames per second is, the character will travel that uh, you know certain amount of pixels per second. Um, this is a bit different than what Codemore does, I believe. Um, this just gives me a a more predictable movement. So depending on the screen frames per second or how fast they can update, we still get really smooth, um, uh, predictable physics. So we will now tick passing in bt and render and we also will set timer equal to zero so that means that we start over and timer will, will be uh, uh, back at, at zero and can continue to be pushed forward so and the other thing that we can do is instead of just calling loop as fast as we can we can actually use window.request animation frame loop so this will run uh, this will run this loop function again during a I guess I want to say it just makes it so that it runs a, a cycle that um, we know that it will be able to refresh correctly uh, I'm not 100% sure I think it's something to do with like buffering it it just um, instead of just calling loop it will wait until it can actually run the function and display everything to the screen correctly. Um, so it's still really quick, but um, it's just better than just calling loop. We could get the same job done just by calling this loop function again at the bottom. So, so far we're getting everything ready. We don't have anything in the tick or render functions, but they should run um, when we start the, uh, when we start the game. So first it's going to initialize, then it's going to start the game loop. Um, so what I'm going to do is there's nothing really to tick. So let's render something to the screen. So one thing that we have in our display is the graphics, um, the graphics tool brush. Okay. And we need to use that to actually draw to the canvas. So we will actually set that up in the init, the init function. We'll say g is equal to display. Oops, display. Dot get graphics. All right, and now down here in the render, uh, we should be able to say g dot fill rect, and this is just a function that. Um, fills a rectangle on the canvas so we can put a position of like 20 by 20 so that's 20 in the X 20 in the Y and then we can set a width and height so we'll say uh, let's say 200 by 5 uh, we'll say 50 all right now the only problem is is this is going to render every frame in it's not going to it's not going to get rid of the last rectangle when it goes and writes a new one. So before we actually do this, we have to say clear rect. And this is going to take a similar parameters. Um, so zero and zero is where to start your clearing. What, what pixels? So we do know that top left is where um, the zero zero is and positive height will go down and width will go to the right so what we're saying here is we're going to take and clear the entire canvas from the very top left all the way to the far right and the far bottom um, and that will clear the rectangle basically it will clear the canvas so that we can draw a rectangle again so we have static numbers here um, and we will have a or we should have a rectangle that gets drawn uh, to the center or to the um, canvas every frame now one thing we can do here is say game dot start and that should start the game let's see what kind of errors we have oh, 
refresh. And game is not a function in launcher. Let's see what we've got going on. Did we not pass in game? Oh, I know what we probably didn't do. We have to come down to the bottom uh, of our game class and we have to return game so that we actually have access to the game class. Um, there's probably going to be a few more errors, but that will be the surface error. And time per tick was not defined, it says. So maybe I fat fingered something. Time per tick. Time per tick. I have timer per tick. We will get rid of that. And that should take care of that error. And notice it's just, I mean, it's just following the the uh, console here. So now look it. We've got a rectangle being drawn to the screen um, every frame. So there's not really any way to tell that it's being drawn any frame every frame here. What we can do, though, is we could change a couple things. So right now we have uh, the render function putting it at a specific spot um, every frame, the exact same spot. Well, what we could do temporarily is we could say var x is equal to 20, var y is equal to 20, and instead of just putting 0, 0 here, we can say x and y, and then in our tick, we can say x plus equals, and we'll say 20 pixels, and we can multiply it. We should be able to multiply it by delta time. That means it should move 20 pixels to the right every second. So now, if I refresh this, we can see that it's moving 20 pixels to the right every second. So this right here, we've got the basics of uh, the game engine and how it's going to, you know, essentially be able to to update everything going, and it's looking good. Um, we can even kind of check to see, uh, you know, make sure that well, we don't need to do anything else like that. Um, but for now, we've just filling a rectangle and moving it across the screen. But that is quite a bit done, guys. That's really cool. Uh, and this right here is the start of the bigger thing, you know, being able to uh, put some graphics and control them. You can see how easy it would be to, instead of just increase it every tick, we take some input from the keyboard or something like that, and we could start moving the rectangle around based on inputs from the key, um, from the keyboard. So I will leave it here for now, and in the next video we will uh, probably start moving some stuff around uh, and interacting with it uh, if we can get to that. Hopefully we can. So I will see you in that video.